the best placement is a pop-up or it takes up the whole screen. And why is that? Uh, interruption marketing, you, you want to stop people. Uh, I prefer pop-ups that have a delay, pop-ups that pop right away before I've even seen the, the page. Those kind of tend to turn me off and I have to X out of them to see the content that I'm using. So whatever opt-in uh, uh, WordPress plugin that you might be using, let me suggest that you uh, use one that has a timer on it that, that takes a few minutes before it pops, uh, a few seconds. Uh, some take required you to scroll down the page and until you get down the page, uh, then it'll pop. You know, let the person see that what they came for is there so that they don't just close your pop-up because they want to see what they came for, usually through a search engine or an ad. So we went over what really works well, but you know, people, you've all seen, people tend to put an opt-in, what's the most popular place? The sidebar, exactly. That is by far where most people put it. It will not perform anywhere near like the pop-up or the full page. You also see the hello bar across the top or a subscribe at the bottom of a post. Now, it's a good idea to do some of these. The, in general, the top one may not hurt. Most people won't notice it. Below the post, what that will do is when people really love a recipe, they get to the bottom and, oh, subscribe. You might get a subscription there, but this, of course, is not your primary way to get subscribers. It's just a way to get some additional ones. Facebook tab, if you've got, particularly if you've got a downloadable cookbook, you really should have a Facebook tab where people can go opt in. So now let's take a look at the most popular positioning. Here I took a screenshot of closet cooking. Do you see the sidebar? You see the opt in? This particular site has two sidebars. So it's the first one, which is in the middle, that has the subscribe. Now, what do you think of this? It's terrible. It's terrible. Okay, why is it terrible? Because your eye automatically goes to the top right. Yeah. And it's search for a recipe. I want a recipe. If I want to opt in, I want to opt in. So I would expect the like above the folds at the top right is where the eye usually goes. Yeah, it's. Wouldn't you say it's a little cluttered? Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So what about the aesthetics of it? They've got a picture of the cookbook. It's color, color matching the site. Good? It blends right in. Is that good or bad? It's bad. You guys are getting a passing grade on this, I tell you. Yeah, you change it to something like a bright green or whatever. So do you think most of their visitors notice this uh, opt-in? Do they sign up? Hey, it's worse than you think. Anybody have, I, I want an answer. Does anybody have any idea of how many of your visitors, what percentage of your visitors most likely, on average, are looking at your site on mobile? What, yeah, what I hear? 50%. 50%, good guess. 80, yeah, it's, we're estimating roughly 60 to 70% at least. So most people are seeing your site on a mobile device including your opt-in forms. Do you know what this looks like on a mobile device? Tiny? Do you think it looks tiny? So it's hard to see the opt-in? Is that right? It's, you got it. They don't see it at all. Let me tell you, anybody looking at this site on a mobile device will not see that opt-in form. The reason is, and I went to the site on my iPhone, and uh, when you have a sidebar, what the mobile device does is it puts it at the bottom underneath the main column. In this case, I scrolled and I scrolled and I scrolled and I scrolled at like 12, 13, 14 pages. Nobody's going to scroll that much. Nobody on a mobile device is ever seeing this guy's opt-in. How many subscribers is he losing? A lot. And I'll bet he doesn't even know it. Okay? So that's, a, that's our big sidebar lecture. And if you guys are smart, you're going to have a whole lot more subscribers just by knowing that one thing. How easy is that? <laughs> the, the days of the sidebar, unfortunately, are gone. The, the sidebar is dead. Uh, yeah. Mobile has changed that, and it, it causes you to have to write your post differently. Yeah. Uh, I stole exactly. your, uh, your time card there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think so we're ready let's, to move on to the next going. one because I, I okay. have a big complaint. I'm going to expand on it. Oh, what about, oh, yeah, we have. Okay, so, you say that the days of the sidebar are gone, but then there are people who kind of expect it to be there. So, you should leave it there, but you should do something else. Put, 
nothing important in it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> that's well, sort of yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you can have a device. You can have a form of your website just for mobile, and it looks different on a non-mobile device. So, I mean, do you have a comment on that, Chris? Uh, no, well, we'll yeah. get into it at the end. Uh, yeah. My yes. wife is waving at this young lady. Along those lines, is so for mobile. And again, I'm, I'm a very big blogger, like just had a year, and still trying to figure out WordPress and all that other fun stuff. But anyhow, in terms of the opt-in for mobile, where does it go? Where do you, where do you recommend it going? Is there is there a plugin or a tool that you can use? I mean, put it at the top. What, where do where we put it? There's a number of uh, opt-in plugins for okay. WordPress. Uh, Aweber has one if you're using them. Mailchimp has one if you're using them. Uh, if you want a little, if, if you're more of a technical person like me that, that wants every control on every little bit, uh, uh, Sumo Me's plugin is twenty dollars a month, but it's worth it. Uh, there's a lot of free ones in there. Opt-in Monster is another good one. We, we could talk about we'll, more of this. We'll have resources end. on the resource page we're and sending we'll, it to. We, we can get into things more in the Q&A, and I'll be here for the next couple hours after we're done. So I, I want to reject your questions, but so, I think we're going to answer yeah, them here. In this yeah, and, and this is a very simple point. What will get you more subscribers? Saying subscribe, receive re recipes by email, or here we've got Stone Soup's uh, Subscribe. It's five ingredient recipes. Enter your email to get a free e cookbook, which will get you a better response. You know, across the board, a free gift does better than subscribe. You know, get our newsletter, get our weekly emails. So it's not hard to put an e cookbook together, and you will get more subscribers. And I've got a pet peeve here, too, I'm going to jump into before we go on to the next slide. Both of these are opt-in pop-ups. You know, you, you've seen, uh, uh, it turns grayscale, the screen dims, and you see the pop-up. Uh, pop-ups are by far today the best way to uh, uh, gain subscribers. Uh, I could go into it here at the end in the Q&A, why I feel the sidebar is dead, and you've got to change your blog writing forever because of it. That could be a whole other workshop. But let me just talk about my pet peeve here, and that is that email is not a choice. Email is the only choice. And if you see here in the uh, left-hand form, you'll see that they are actually competing for your, your, your email with social. This is the, in, in the prior slide, same thing, they had a social bar. Uh, right underneath the opt-in form. If you want to build an email list, only give them that option. You can always you can always offer uh, uh, social connections later on. And and Facebook competed directly with email opt-ins for a long time there. That changed uh, heavily a year and a half ago when it became pay to play. So those Facebook subscribers that were one to one, you know, maybe sixty for sixty percent of your 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 page subscribers were seeing your posts. You're competing with your own email opt-in, and that's, this is the crux of email marketing. You only offer the email opt-in, and you kind of squeeze that email out of them. The original email opt-in page 10 years ago was called a squeeze page, and this is why. Uh, email is not an option. It's the only option. The short translation of what he just said is never put those social buttons under your subscribe button. <laughs> Let's go on. Yeah, don't yeah. compete with yourself. Don't compete with your list. Facebook is bigger than you are. So now a cookbook is an obvious thing, and readers generally like cookbooks. There's other things you can do for opt-ins, but ideas for cookbooks, you know, again, I see some boring ones out there. Uh, download our favorite recipes. Not bad, but, you know, could be better. Let's take a look at these. 30-day real food back-to-school menu plan. Now. I'm sure some of you are moms. Would that be useful? i download that. I still need something like that. Cooking with Trader Joe's gluten-free. Very specific. Uh, the Twinkies. I'm sure we're all going to go download the Twinkie cookbook, right? Mm -hmm. feed, our, feed our families this great health food. And this one I love. Get, you, know, you know, get a little creative here and experiment. You might get... A lot of people opting in. Plus, this is a way to express yourself, you know? This one, the 12 donuts of Christmas. I think that is just so cute. So anyway, start 
let the gears turn. What can you give away as a free cookbook? And have, how many of you have made a, cook, a downloadable cookbook? Okay, was, hey, a significant number. Was it hard? Pretty easy? When I did my first ones a couple years ago, I agonized my graphics guy and I over the formatting of it. So, uh, you know, we were dinking and dinking and stuff like that. And I, I had a brainstorm um, just a week or so ago about how I, could, how I could do a respectable cookbook in a matter of hours. And I made my first cookbook that looks pretty good in an hour and a half with all free tools. So I, I wrote up a little tutorial on it and I'm making a little video on it because I, I know some people struggle with stuff like that. And that'll be available in the resources we send you to. So, you know, create a cookbook if you haven't. Next, we are getting into the opt-in process. It's very important that people understand. I found a lot of food bloggers don't really understand uh, exactly what the flow is and why. I want to ask you, how many of you are now using a single opt-in process? Raise your hands. Okay. How many of you are using a double opt-in process? All right. It's hard to tell. I think it's a similar amount. How many of you don't, are, have an email list but you don't know if you're using single opt-in or double opt-in? Okay. Just a couple. All right. We're going to go through the basics of the single opt-in and then a double opt-in. A single opt-in is just a few steps. The visitor fills out the form and then he gets sent to a web page that's a welcome message. You know, hey, thank you for subscribing. And then usually an email is sent with the download link for the cookbook or whatever. Or you might also have the download link on the web page that you send them to. So it's two or three steps here. The double opt-in process is more complex. Your visitor fills out the form. He gets sent to a web page that says, you're almost there. Go check your email. You need to confirm. So then he has to go check his email and click on the confirm. And then he's sent to another web page that says, hey, you are now subscribed. We're confirming that. You're on the list. So. Uh, and uh, let's see, so he's clicked the confirm, he's sent to another website, and then usually he's sent to download or the click to confirm has a download link. So you've got several steps here. Let's compare the two. For a single opt-in, you've got one opt-in, a thank you page, and an email with a download link. Or you could just have the download in the thank you page. Double opt-in, you've got one opt-in, Three emails, please confirm, conscript, subscription confirmed, and here's your download. And two thank you pages. One is check your email and confirmed. The other is you are now confirmed. So, so there's a lot going, what do you, there's a lot going on here, isn't there, Chris? I'll tell you, I, I, I'm worn out just from the description. <laughs> I mean, Anita, isn't there an easier way here? Single lock up, a single opt-in. <laughs> Let's 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 see if we you, you have an example of that maybe. I have an example. Well, here's what we've got. We're walking you through real life examples of the double opt-in and the single opt-in. How many of you are on Mailchimp? Okay. Now Mailchimp enforces a double opt-in. Are you? Do you find you're using a double opt-in? Yes. We disabled it. You disable. There is a way, but they don't make it easy. They don't make it easy. Yeah. Exactly. So I, most people just... Yes, yeah, so you call it uh, contagious support and ask them to go to single? Um, I, can't, I, I actually don't remember how we did it, but I think we went through certain forums and we searched and we figured out how to do it. Yeah, I'm, it's good. How many, so how many of you have MailChimp and you have a single opt-in? Okay, on, only a few. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, you know, let me know about those later because I can add them to our resource list. Okay, that would be awesome. Uh, for me, I mean, I've had my mailing list for, what, seven, eight years or something like that. I've always used single opt-in. You know the reason that the email service providers want double opt-in. You know, let's avoid the spam here. But I've had no trouble, virtually no complaints. And my view is in our niche, 
you know, the food blogging niche, most of us are sending recipes out. How many people view recipes as spam? I mean, people love recipes. They're these warm, fuzzy things, right? So I, I don't get spam complaints. And um, I'm very happy with my single opt-in. So let's take a look. I'm using um, Six Sisters stuff. Any of you familiar with that site? It's, they have an interesting concept. It's a wonderful concept. This is six sisters. There are no brothers in the family. And they're all over the country, so they stay in touch. They, they came up with this idea of doing a website together where they publish recipes and creative ideas and share tips and, and stuff. And it's got some great content on it. But they're making a lot of mistakes in their email. Specifically, their email is where they're weak. So I'm using them as an example. A lot of it's an example of what not to do. So here's Six Sisters Stuff opt-in form. It's got reader's favorite recipes. You give them your email address, your first name, your last name, and subscribe. It's a double opt-in. And here's where they send you. Remember, you go to a thank you page, right? The thank you page says, thank you for subscribing, but you're not done. You need to go look at your email and confirm. Uh, that's not what this says. For their thank you page, they send you to their e-cookbook sales page. Okay? Now, you still need to go look at your email and confirm. So let's go look at the email. And here's what you get in your email. They're sticking with the default MailChimp. They're not making it pretty. They're not branding it. They just say, please confirm subscription. Think they could do a little better? Remember, this is your communication. This is who you are. This, okay. is, this is the first point of contact to show. Right. You, Are they you might want to engage a little bit, you know, make a promise of what's to come. Click the, you know. Show a picture of the sister or something, you know. So, confirm subscription. You confirm. Guess where you go? You're supposed to go to a page that says, yeah, that says, that you're now you're confirmed, you're on the list. You go back to their cookbook sales page. All right. Okay. So, now what? Well, I subscribed. And it's like, okay, these guys, they, they produce some good stuff. So now I go back and uh, I get a, um, another email that says, you are now subscribed. But there's no cookbook. And I want my, I'm, you know, I'm doing it for this, this presentation, but I still want that cookbook. I want to look at it. I want to see if there's some recipes I want. So I'm looking for the cookbook. And... Uh, I didn't get the cookbook. Uh, it, it, it took me a while to find it. I finally found it. And we're going to cover that in a minute because it, I had to hunt for it. The cookbook download link was sent to the email. It just took me a while to find it. Now let's con contrast this with Clean Food Crush. The opt-in form, which we've already seen, this is the main page. Single opt-in. You sign up. And here's their thank you page. I'll read it to you. You notice it, it's branded. It's got a caricature of Rachel. And here's what she says. Congratulations on taking the first step toward regularly eating clean. You should receive your seven days of fun, clean recipes e-cookbook in your email within the next 15 to 20 minutes. If you do not receive your cookbook, click this link and it's a whitelisting link. She's telling you exactly what to expect. She's, she's communicating with you, like here's what to look for. And you want to comment about this, Chris? Sure, depending on the time of day. Uh, and it, it, it doesn't, it's not even concentric to what email list autoresponder service you're, you're using. Uh, a Tuesday morning, when the email queue is heavy, and there's lots of people sending out emails to their list. If someone subscribes at that time, by the time your email goes into that queue in the machines and gets to the bottom of the list to where it's sent out, you could be waiting 20 minutes. So you want to kind of give them that cushion. If they subscribe in the middle of the night, you're gonna get it right away. But if you're talking Tuesday morning in the US, you're gonna, you're, there's gonna be a short wait. So offer them a little bit of a push. Also the use by email whitelist generator to generate their whitelisting uh, page. And we'll be talking about that more when we come to Gmail in just a moment. Okay, so 
And here's the last in their, their little sequence where you opt in. You're getting your download link for the cookbook. It arrives in email, and you notice it's just text. It's just text with, and, and straight to the point. First of all, I want to start by congratulating you for taking the time to learn more about eating clean. By following these recipes, you can really learn how to prepare your own clean, delicious meals in very little time. It is, and she talk, gives a little background. Here's a link to once again view and read your e-cookbook that you registered for, and there's the link to download it. That's the complete cycle. Yes? So I'm just curious. I'm not as familiar with the American laws, but I know in Canada we actually have an anti-spam law that came into effect in the summertime. Right. Where we have to collect express consent. So what's the best way to collect that within the six-month period of time that it's in It is express consent. Express consent Double can be determined two different ways. Let me, you know, I'm not a lawyer and I don't play the one on TV. We actually admitted <laughs> that line about eight years ago. My friend did, and I've heard it since he, while he was here. So I wanted to make sure you knew that we were the originators. But no, I don't play a lawyer on TV, and I suggest that you pay a, a Canadian uh, a lawyer money to be sure that your case may have complied. Uh, right now, basically, the can spam uh, laws in both the U.S. and Canada comply and comprise two things: that that you can reply to the email and get a response. Don't use no replies. Number two, uh, you have to have a physical address that actually will get an email, uh, get a, a snail mail at in the footer of all emails, and that you have a one-click unsubscribe link. Uh, so that being now, Canada's not, I believe. And I'm not a lawyer, yeah. but I believe <laughs> that they are, are still working with uh, uh, single opt-in because every major marketer uses it that I know, and there's lots of Canadians probably here right now that are on this list. Uh, but those are the three items. You've got to be able to reply, you've got to be able to get a snail mail, and you've got to be able to unsubscribe with one click. So, we're, we're getting into do, do you see the difference, single opt-in, double opt-in, and the experience for the user, right? In, any questions about it? Yes. Yeah, what I do is uh, down download our free cookbook and get such and such and weekly recipes, you know. Uh, it, Ideally, right up front, or when you send them the cookbook, and you say, and you'll get weekly recipes or whatever, you know. So just go ahead as if it's a natural part of the cookbook process. And, and you'll find your voice that they want to hear from you in this. You'll, you'll find your, how often your list wants you to be email them. Uh, some of my clients email every day, twice a day. Uh, some people swore by the fact that if you don't email quite often, that you lose your list. Uh, the idea here is to begin emailing at least once a week and get a feel for what your people want. You know, you may find that your list wants to hear from you two, three times a week, but taking that first step to begin emailing more often, as I said, for God's sake, email the list is your first step. People will tell you if, they, if you're overwhelming them and if, and if you hear a few complainers, don't take them too seriously because if the rest of your list is clicking, and you're getting good click-through rates and open rates from your email, then obviously the few complainers are wrong, and you can just remove them from the list. What about this double opt-in versus single opt-in on a mobile device? Okay, so as we talked about, look at how many hoops you had to jump through. What, five, six different things you had to get to get in your cookbook on a phone? Now, many people are going to deal with that, and this is one reason that the op single opt-in has become so worth so much more over protecting yourself with double opt-in. Well, think about you've got a, a phone, and you have to go back and forth between your email and your browser to do this. So, anyway, let's move on. So, again, we're, we're talking promise and deliver. Yeah. 